In this video, I'm going to show you how to create what I'm going to call an infinite buffer in C. So an infinite buffer is going to be a buffer that can hold an infinite amount of data. Now, of course, we can't actually do that. Our computer will eventually run out of memory, but we're going to call it an infinite buffer just because it's more fun. So a buffer is something we might use to store input data. It could be data input from the terminal. It could be data input from a file, but we're going to call it an input buffer because that's where we're going to store the data. And we might give it a size. We might say like number define buffer size, and we might give it a fixed size like five. And then we could create some array that's going to be of that buffer size using the constant. And what this means is that we can store in this buffer data up until the buffer size. And we might have some code that'll then ask the user for input. So we could say like four int i is equal to zero, i is less than the buffer size, i plus plus. And we're going to ask the user to input data up until this buffer. So we'll say like enter, and then we'll say scanf percent d, and we'll say here and buffer at i. And what we're going to do is we're going to take in input from the user and we're going to store it in this buffer at the index of i, this counter variable that's going to go from zero by one up until the buffer size. And once we've stored that data in the buffer, we can do different stuff with it. We could print it out. We could, you know, compute an average and things like that. So we, we might as well do that. We could say here like int total is equal to zero. We could say four int, int i is equal to zero i is less than the buffer size and we'll say let's print it out and then we'll we'll also compute the, the average based on the total too so we'll say print f buffer percent d is equal to percent d and we'll output the current index and the value at the current index in the buffer and we're also going to add the current value of the buffer to the total there so that way we can print out an average as well so we'll say here average and we'll print out the average here as well by dividing the total by the buffer size. Now this is, you know, a fine enough way to do user input. It'll enter in five numbers and, you know, we could then, you know, compute some data. We can compute some data with that, like the average, we can output the numbers and we could process user input this way. The only thing is, is that we're limited by the buffer size here. We can only go up to this buffer size and that's it. So, you know, we can run this here and we can compile it and, you know, we're going to get, you know, enter this, so we'll say like three, four, five, six, seven, and we've got an average of five. That's correct. And we've output the data in the buffer and we're happy, but we're limited to this specific size in terms of our user input. What if I want to potentially input some unknown amount of numbers and it could be very high. There's a couple ways we could, we could solve that. One is we could have a very large buffer. So maybe I make my buffer like 2048. We make it very large, maybe even larger, maybe 10,000 something. And maybe we'll have an option here to quit after a certain point. So the user can say like enter negative one to quit. And then the user quits and we can then store up to 2,048 values. That would be one way of solving this problem. And that is the way that some people solve this problem. Just, they just have a very large buffer and they just count on the fact that the input for the program will never be beyond that buffer size. I'm going to show you how to make what I'm going to call an infinite buffer. And that's going to be a buffer that's going to automatically expand its size as needed. So let's actually comment out this code. And then I'm going to go over my infinite buffer code here. So my infinite buffer, I'll say int star buffer here, and I'm going to give an initial size to the buffer. And the initial size is going to be very small. I'm going to say the initial size is just, is just going to be two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dynamically allocate space. So I'm going to say buffer is equal to malloc size of int times size. So I'm going to dynamically allocate space for two integers. So my buffer can initially hold two integers. Because I'm using malloc, I'm going to have to include stdlib.h because stdlib.h is where malloc is. I'm also going to include stdbool.h just so that way I can use the value true as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to have a loop that's going to input some number of pieces of data, but we're not going to know how many when the loop runs. So it's going to be an indefinite loop that's going to run indefinitely until the user enters negative one. So I'm going to say this, I'm going to say int input is going to store my input from the user. Int 
we're going to say here num data we're going to say is initially going to be zero that's going to store the number of pieces of data that i input and we'll do this now we're going to say while true ask the user for input and store it into input initially so we'll say like enter and then we'll say scanf and i'm going to store the input from the user into input initially and what i'm going to do is i'm going to then transfer the input into the buffer i'm going to do that though if the user doesn't enter negative one so i'm going to say enter and then i'll say negative one to quit in brackets here so if the user doesn't enter negative one i'm going to transfer the input into the buffer if the user does enter negative one i'm going to quit and i'm going to quit by using break so i'm going to say here if input is equal to negative one we want to quit so break and break will break us out of the loop otherwise if the user doesn't enter negative one to quit i'm going to store the data in the buffer and i'm going to store the data in the buffer at the current position in the buffer and we're going to use num data to keep track of that so i'm going to say here else buffer at num data is equal to we're going to say input and then i'm going to increase i'm going to increment num data because we've we've basically stored another piece of data in our buffer and this is going to keep track of that it's going to keep track of our current position in the buffer it's also going to keep track of implicitly the number of pieces of data in our buffer as well so then what i'm going to do is what if num data is two if num data reaches two that means that we place the value in buffer zero we place the value in buffer one and now num data is two this means that we're about to exceed the size of our buffer here because if we input another value and put it at buffer two the third index in our buffer we've gone beyond the size of the buffer because we can only store two things in our buffer and because we zero index our arrays in c buffer at two would be the third position in array of size two so what we're going to do is if num data is equal to the size of the buffer we're going to use realloc to increase the size of the buffer so we're going to say here buffer is equal to realloc buffer size of int and we're going to multiply it by size and what we're going to do is we're going to double the size of the buffer we're going to say size times equals two and we're going to double the size of the buffer and so what's going to happen now is that if num data is equal to the size let's say size is let's say size is two and num data is two size is going to be increased to four we're going to reallocate space for this buffer realloc is going to return a pointer to the to the reallocated space and it's going to be double the size of before and size is still going to keep track of the current size of the buffer so by the time we've gone through this loop here we'll have input some number of pieces of data into the buffer here and the, the the num data will keep track of the number of pieces of data in the buffer and the buffer will have been increased to a certain size depending on the number of pieces of data we've entered so we're no longer limited in size we can now store basically as much as the user wants to input and we could do the same thing we did as before in terms of say outputting like the the members of the buffer the the elements of the buffer and a, and the average of things in the buffer as well so here let's let's actually just kind of copy and paste this code here and i'm going to say here int totals equals zero and we'll say here uh i is less than i'm going to say num data because num data is the number of pieces of data in the buffer right same thing for the average i'm going to divide it by total divided by num data because that's the number of pieces of data in the buffer the size keeps track of how many pieces of data the buffer could hold the, the 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 size of the block of data that's been allocated for the buffer that's what size is keeping track of num data is keeping track of how many pieces of data we've actually put into the buffer so far so just for interest's sake because it's going to be interesting let's print out the number of pieces of data and we're going to print out the buffer size so we'll say like num data and we'll say percent d and we'll output num data we'll also print out the buffer size we'll say buffer size percent d and we'll print out the current size so let's see how this behaves now let's see how this behaves let's clear this we'll do a recompile and we'll run it here 
So it says enter negative one to quit. And we're going to say here like two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then I'll put a negative one. And I get here that the buffer contains those values. The average is four, and that seems right. And we've got here num data six, buffer size eight. So what's going on here is that as we've run through this loop and we've entered in more and more data and stored it into the buffer, periodically what's happening is the buffer is being resized. So whenever the size of the buffer is equal to num data, we do a buffer resize and we allocate more space for the buffer. So what happened here was when we entered in the, the first two numbers, the next time through the loop, it realizes that, hey, we have to increase the size of the buffer. And it is, it gets increased to four. Then we keep entering more numbers and eventually we hit four. And then at that point, again, four is gonna be equal to four and we increase the size of the buffer again to eight. And that's what's gone on here. So let's just say I run it again and I only put in one number and then I quit. At this point, the buffer size is just two. A buffer resize never had to happen. Same thing if I were to put in say, if I put in like one, two, and I'll say three, and then I do negative one. This time the buffer size is four. So the buffer only had to be resized once and it was doubled to four from two because I put in three pieces of data. When I put in that second piece of data, the next time through the loop, this would run, it would increase the size of the buffer by two. To make this clearer, we could, we could throw a printf in here. We could say printf, we could say buffer size, and we'll say percent %d, and we'll just show the current size of the buffer. We'll show that the buffer has been you know, increased in size. So we'll say here, clear, we'll recompile, we'll run it again, and I'll put in like one, two, and we get a buffer size of four now. Three, four, buffer size has been increased to eight now. Five, six, seven, eight, buffer size goes up to 16 now, right? And we could just keep going with this, and eventually the buffer size will go to 32, and it's just gonna keep going and going and going, right? All the way up to 64 eventually as well. And so this is uh, kind of neat because we've got this, this input buffer here now that we can have programmatically increase in size based on the amount of input we're getting. And what's kind of cool about this is you could use this technique then to have your program process and handle data of unknown large size and you could increase the buffer in such a way that you're able to handle more and more data with Realloc to do that. So of course your computer will eventually run out of memory and so it's not really an infant buffer, but again, it's way more fun to call an infant buffer, so that's what we're calling it. And this has been an example of an infinite buffer. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.